My name is John LaRock. I am the student ministries leader here at River of Life Church. And I'm just so blessed to be able to give the Devo to you guys today and to be able to uh, talk with you about our Devo, about God's Word today. And so today, I've titled this devotional, Patience is Key. And so I don't know about any of you, uh, have you ever met that person, though, that just kind of complains all the time where nothing is ever good, nothing is ever, you know, right, and... People call him maybe a Debbie Downer. Um, I know my mom, when I was growing up, um, you know, I was a complainer at times. I'll admit it, confession. And, you know, I'd say, oh, there's nothing I can do, especially in the summer. I'm so bored. My mom would say, uh, if you want to complain, I'll give you something to complain about. And normally that would involve chores or having to do more around the house, stuff like that. Uh, but it's either there's always those people that nothing is ever good enough. Uh, Something amazing can happen to them, and then uh, they just kind of complain. And how many of us do that in our Christian walk to where, you know, God does these amazing things in our life, and he blesses us, and, you know, the, the heavens rain down, you know, the glory of God. And then next week it's like, oh, life sucks. Oh, I just hate everything right now. God isn't even here. Like, I just feel so alone. And, you know, it's like what we forgot about last week when God had this major breakthrough. Or maybe we've been going through this, you know, dry patch in our life and, you know, we just can't really feel God and we're just like life is meaningless, getting to Ecclesiastes a little bit with that. But basically just nothing is ever good enough. And so what I'm going to focus on, um, just that patience, waiting for God, because uh, God always comes through. Uh, but when we complain, it just kind of nullifies everything God is going to do. We're trying to say, you know what, God, you need to act now. You need to do this. Uh, I can't stand life on this earth right now. we got to have patience. So I'm going to be in the book of Numbers. We're going back to the Old Testament here. Uh, probably one of those books maybe a lot of people don't read, especially because the name is called Numbers. But we're going to be in chapter 11 today. We're going to be going through verses 1 through 9. And to set the scene a little bit, this is about the Israelites, and uh, they've been out of Egypt for a while, and they kind of have a history with complaining, kind of when they uh, first got out of Egypt, maybe a month in, started complaining, like, God, Moses, why did you, you know, bring us out of here? God, why can't you provide for us? Moses, did you bring us out here to die? There's no good food. At least we had good food in Egypt. And so God created uh, manna for the people uh, so that way they could eat it. And, you know, immediately after a month of all these plagues that happened or a month after all the plagues and, you know, God's deliverance and the parting of the uh, Red Sea, it's like, you know, where's God now? He's obviously not here. Uh, and they just came out of this cloud. And so then we're picking up the scene again. We're probably about two years after this. They're just starting, though. They're trekking to the wilderness to go to the promised land. And so they're actually only about three days in. And so that's where we pick up. And it says, And the people complained in the hearing of the Lord about their misfortunes. And when the Lord heard it, his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some outlying parts of the camp. And the people cried out to Moses, and Moses prayed to the Lord, and the fire died down. So the name of that place was called Tabara, or Tabera, because the fire of the Lord burned among them. Now the rabble that lived among them had a strong craving, and the people of Israel also wept again and said, Oh, that we had meat to eat. Remember the fish we ate in Egypt that cost nothing. The cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, the garlic. But now our strength is dried up and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Now the manna was like a coriander seed and its appearance like that of bdellium. And the people went about and gathered it and ground it into handmills or beat it into mortars and boiled it in pots and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was like the taste of cakes baked with oil. When the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell with it. And so you have the people of Israel. God has provided them food. God has provided them freedom, provided justice. And yet they still find something to complain about. They still find something, you know what, that's not good enough, God. It says God, like his anger was kindled against them. His anger arose. Because it's like, I've done all this for you. I brought you out of this. You cried out because you were so oppressed and so frustrated and you're struggling. You're in the depths of hell in your own experience. And I brought you out of that and I gave you food. I gave you manna, which tastes like cake. And I love cake. So that would be amazing to me. But to say, you know what, God, that's not enough. You're not doing enough for me. And so my challenge to you is, 
What are the things that God is giving you and you're not grateful? Are you saying, God, you know what you need to act now? You need to do this now on my time, on my terms. Now, what are you demanding of God instead of being grateful for? The blessing that is given you where you're alive today, you're able to breathe. Even if we're not in the healthiest of conditions, we are still alive. Even if we don't have the finances we wish we'd have, we are still richer than 80% of the world. So what should we be grateful for? What are the talents and gifts God has given us that we're grateful for? When we're going through this hard time, how are we being patient? How are we thanking God? So you know what, God, I know that the situation isn't what I want right now, but I'm thankful that you're still with me, that your presence is still in my life. I'm reminded of David when he went through these hard times and Saul was trying to kill him. And he's, you know, crying out to God saying, God, I need help. But Lord, just don't take your spirit from me. In these hard times, when you're going through these hard times, is your prayer, God, I just, I love your Holy Spirit. I just want your presence every day. Or is he, you know what, God, I want more money. I want a different car because my car is 2016 and I need a 2020 model. Or I need a bigger house. You know what, God, I need this promotion. I need this raise. And yes, you know, we should be crying out to God with our needs, as the Bible says. But we also need to be grateful for that job that we prayed about that maybe we're not as thankful for anymore. Or, you know, that spouse that maybe is frustrating us. And we prayed so long for God to bring us someone. Be thankful. Be grateful. Be patient in the hard times. And with that, I'm going to end the video and I'm going to uh, pray a blessing over all of us. So just bow with me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord. Uh, Lord God, just for these patience builders, Lord God, when it seems uh, that, that we're frustrated, it seems like, you know, in our time, you're not coming fast enough. And I just pray, Lord God, that we will do away with that mindset, that, Lord God, we will bow our knee to you and that we will submit to you in your time and your uh, justice and your plan, Lord God, that the whole world is yours and we are just in it. So I just pray, Lord God, that we will be in submission to you and we'll be thankful, Lord God, for all the blessings we do have, Lord God, that we've uh, just taken advantage of or we forgot about how long we prayed for something and you came through because, God, you always come through and it's always in the perfect timing. So, God, we give you uh, just so much thanks for that and so much praise for that. Just pray you'll be with us in our day, Lord God, that we will meditate on your word day and night, as the psalmist says. And, Lord God, that we will uh, just be a light for you in such a dark world and such a dark time. We give you glory and honor in your holy mighty name. God bless, church.